This is Coogan Cassis for IFL TV in association with MTK Global. Delighted to be joined by Mr. Liam Cameron. How are you, Liam? Not bad. I'm hanging in there, but how are you, Paul? I'm all right, mate. I don't know what's going on with your hair at the minute. I don't know. It's this coronavirus. I've just I've told you, give me five minutes and I'm going to um, put a bit of gel on it. But I look like Edward Scissorhands at the minute, don't I? A little bit. You look like you should just really shave that off, mate. Oh, no, no. I've got to keep this gaff going. <laughs> um, right, Liam, let's, let's jump straight to it. Um, obviously, yeah. a lot of people will be aware of your situation uh, regarding what happened to you uh, in reference to UCAD, uh, etc. But a lot of people won't know the ins and outs of actually what happened. And um, <sighs> just following through your story over the last few months, especially, it does seem like um, there's just an inconsistency with the way... It's uh, killed me. It's absolutely killed me. Um, mm. Everything. My my dreams as a little kid have been shot to bits. Um, I, I boxed on two years actually today. I boxed. I paid for a drug test. I demanded a drug test. I boxed. I won. Ten days later, I got a um, a big pad from um, is it UCAD? Give me like like I've inserted benzologin in my system. I was like, whoa, I was like I thought we were having an heart attack, panic attack. I, I didn't even know what it was with my system. But it was this uh, metabolic acid of cocaine. I'm like, I've not even been around cocaine. I don't even, I'm training for a fight. I just, I just don't know what's happened. It's like, I'm willing to do any lie detector test or anything. Anyone wants to put up a lie detector, I'll... I'll 100% willing to do it. Let's just, for people that don't know, kind of backtrack a little bit. So I've got the statement from UCAD, which they released regarding this. So I just want to read a little bit about it and then we can obviously talk about it. So uh, professional boxer Liam Cameron has been suspended for a period of four years following an anti-doping rule violation. Uh, Mr. Cameron provided a sample in competition following a bout against Mr. Nick Gemman for the Commonwealth title, middleweight title on uh, April 27th. Yeah. Uh, analysis of Mr. Cameron's A sample returned as an as an adverse analytical finding for benzo. You pronounced it earlier on. Uh, a metabolite of cocaine. Cocaine yeah. is a non-specified substance that is uh, prohibited in competition only. So, just kind of talk me through after, like you just said there, the fight with Nick. Genman on April the 27th. What was the time period in between you finding out that there was an issue? How long was that period? Yes, a few days I got offered. I got offered Martin Murray. I was fit, ready, strong. I got offered good money. Billy Joe Saunders pulled that. I thought, yes, I'm going to beat him. Everything I've worked for now is going to come to this moment. Like I got the letter through and it was like, oh. I just couldn't, be, I couldn't believe what were happening to me. It was like a daydream. I didn't understand what the substance were in my system or anything. So you were given a four-year ban, Liam. Um, the UCAD statement goes to on to say that you disputed, um, you admitted to it, but you disputed. Uh, what, what was it you actually disputed? I had to admit to the case because to go forward with it, yes, it's my body, it was in my system. I admit that I'm responsible for in my pee, it comes out. But now they're saying about, they're trying to get me on, I didn't open a B sample. They want a £1,200 off me. When you're a broke, broke boxer, what's trying just to make ends meet, you can't open a B sample, it's impossible. What am I going to do? Borrow money, what, what's not there? So I couldn't do that. They wanted to, me to do an air follicle. What were £1,200 in air? And they wanted three samples of that. I couldn't do that. 
what more do I have to do? So I have to admit the charge. It's like I've got no money, so I can't fight it as well as these pro boxers what's done steroids. And it's not like I've done steroids or performance enhancing. I don't think cocaine would help you in a fight, especially a trace. Even the Professor Cohen, what was on the case, said I wouldn't be able to feel it. My mouth would probably have been numb at the time. But this was four days before the fight when it went into my system. This is what we've got to understand. It weren't the day of the fight, it was four days before. So it's like, why would I do it? A, tra- a trace of a cocaine. It's obviously the money. When you're counting it, I did eight thousand pounds of tickets, and you know, you know, Sheffield, it's rough, it's rough as f. Do you know what I mean? I go to bars and clubs. Everyone rolls rolls notes up and they're snorting them. But I'm trying to get out of that life. Do you know what I mean? I'm trying to get get out. I don't want nothing to do with it. And like, I can't, I can't deny a ticket sale. They said I should have wore rubber gloves. You knew it was. It was a bad area. Why didn't you wear rubber gloves? What 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 do I supposed to do? I didn't even know this was gonna happen. The the four years you got, which was dated from uh, May May two thousand eighteen. I mean what it seemed a very harsh length of time that ban. Uh, in consideration to uh, the multiple cases that go on during the year and the bans that people receive, it seems that a four-year ban is very harsh in your in your situation. Oh, it's absolutely killed me. I've tried to fight it. I've paid thousands of pounds. What I ain't got. I've, I've absolutely emptied kitty. Do you know what I mean? I've emptied a kitty. What I ain't got. I'm left alone now. With I've got two birthdays next week and my two childs. They've left me with, with nothing. They've just kicked me and not and get anything. I ain't got I ain't got ten pounds to scratch my arse with. And that's be that's been nice. Do you know what I mean? What do I do? I I'm, I'm trying to beg to get my license back. I'm begging, pleading. Just give me a year off my sentence. Give me three years. Even though that's harsh. Do you know what I mean? It's it's horrible what I'm going through day and day out. I'm having people messaging me saying, "Oh, you 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 would beat him, you'd beat him." I got stripped of my Commonwealth title and stuff. It's horrible. I've gone through hell to get. I've I've I got offered a um, to go girl to we'll give you seventeen months, and I went, "No, I can I go girl to." Because if I go girl to, who's going to pay to watch me fight if I'm taking cocaine? But which was a trace, by the way, my new 25 nanograms. It's like I've gone, I've worn my heart on my sleeve and I've got four years. I've not took steroids to performance enhance myself. And like, I'm getting proper abused by this UCAD. And they don't, they don't get an F. They don't, they don't care about my family. I'm, I mean, I'm in shit now. It's horrible. Liam, can you explain to us the difference between you saying you're not going guilty but admitting to the charge? Um, admitting to the charge is to say, yes, I've um, I've took cocaine. But I'd be lying. They want me to say that so it covers their back. They want me to make a story up. Mr. Littis has said they want to make a story up and just, just make a story and say, yes, you've took it. And they'll give you 17, 16, whatever months it is. But I can't do that because I've got family at home that are going to be listening and stuff. So I've not, I've not like gone through that route. I've just pleaded non guilty, which I am. And I swear to God, in my kid's life, I haven't touched cocaine within any time of this fight before, period. No chance. And I can do a lie detector test. If anyone wants to put the lie detector test money up, I promise you, I will pass it. You're right. I don't see why you should uh, admit to something, even exactly. if you're even if lying. getting a lesser term uh, on on the ban, if you firmly believe that uh, you're in the right. 
you're, you're correct. This you're minute correct. stage where I am now, I've got nothing to lose. Now, like I said, I've got I've got birthdays coming up. I've got a little boy who I love, and I've got a little girl, and I've got a girlfriend. They've all stuck by me. It's like now nah, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to like. What do I do? I'm going to have to beg you, Cad, to give me my license. If they want me to pretend and say, yeah, I've took cocaine four days before a fight, a, ten, a tenth of a recreational line, what they said, I'll admit to it just to get my license back. That's how desperate I am as a human being, what they've done to me. What was the reason they gave you, if they gave you a reason, to why the ban was so lengthy? Um, because they said if they let me off, they'd have to let every other person off. The judge, um, I don't remember his name, but it's all on the UCAD website, said it was harsh from UCAD what they said, what they've given me a lengthy ban for, and they need to um, justify why they give one person three months, one person six months, and one person four years. I've got the worstest whack ever. If you were gonna take, if you were gonna take anything, if I'm not saying I'm gonna, if I were gonna do anything to make me a better boxer and make me more money, most money, I'd take steroids, wouldn't I? I wouldn't take cocaine. What's cocaine gonna do? I'd take steroids and I'd, I'd make sure I'd get a better, better fitness. But it's not even steroids what they've got me for. Liam, I just want to read you another part of the UCAD uh, statement uh, in reference to what you're talking about now. So UCAD says, whilst often viewed as a recreational drug, it can have uh, performance enhancing <laughs> effects and there are significant health risks associated with its use. In addition, its use during competition can pose a real risk to other competitors this is especially so in contact and combat sports. So they're saying there basically that it can have performance enhancing drugs. But also despite Professor being Cohen, a recreational yeah. drug. But also Professor Cohen said that the amount I took what wouldn't be visible on a surface wouldn't have no effect for on my system. He don't realize he don't understand why. I've only took a little bit instead of a big amount because it wouldn't have any effect on my system and you wouldn't be able to see it with your eyes on a surface. So this is the other thing, what what's not being read out kind of thing. The same one, and, and by the way, Professor Cohen is a UCAD professor. I couldn't afford my, my professor. What is the current situation regarding this? Is this something that is still going on in terms of you? I'm still trying to fight. Like, I, I did a, I did a, uh, I've done two years now. I've begged them. I've done ev everything. They've just absolutely took piss out of me. I've gone, I've spent thousands of pounds. They've not even given me a month off me original thing you've got people from my same city i'm not going to mention names i'm not going to disown anyone they got done for steroids and they got six seven months off the case and this was steroids this was no recreational drug do you know what i mean it's like big big daddy miller whatever his name is free growth hormones he gets six months i'm i'm watching this i'm listening to this and I've done a tenth, whatever, the, this is not my words, this is their words, tenth of a recreational line. And I'm getting done for four years for it. I got stripped my Commonwealth title. I've put 20 years worth of hard work into it. What, for nothing, just to blow it before four days before a fight? No chance. I just can't accept it. And through ever my life now, as an old man, if I lived that long, I'm going to be like, what if? Where could I have been? I got off of Martin Murray. It's, it's bullshit, absolutely bullshit. L Liam, you're halfway through this with this period at the moment, so if you're to run the length of this ban until 2022, will you still want to be boxing 
in that case with four years out of the ring? Well, you've got talks where they earn. You can get me a little deal and I'll fight. I've, I've fought Callum Smith in amateurs, Fowler. I beat, I beat everyone. And I was playing it game as a kid, do you know what I mean? And I won ABAs. I know that were eight, nine, ten years ago. But I'm capable of good, good stuff. I've got the pedigree. So, did you, Liam, did you not say, or correct me if I'm wrong, in a, in a statement that you made saying that this will probably force you to retire from the sport, having four years out? Yeah, I've, I've already retired in my head. I'm done. I'm absolutely done. But now I'm like going to bed every day going, what happens if I beg him? What happens if I beg these UCAD? Give them what they want and say, yeah. Oh, yeah, I did take, take it. Then six months later, come out line. I've only, I've only done it because they've asked me to. What do I do? I'm willing, I'm willing here now to do a lie detector test. If anyone wants to put it up, and I'll pass it. If I don't, I'll pay them double money for what they've paid for the lie detector. Liam, do you have an option to go back to UK and and change what you've said? Do you yeah. have an option? Yeah. Yes. Yes. But it's like, this is the last resort now. This is why I'm screaming out for help. What do I do? I've got no job. I've got nothing. I've got no money income. I'm a 16-year-old boy again. I wag school to go to gym, training with Prince Nazim's brother in our gym and stuff. And like, I'm back to that same kid. I've got nothing. I know you've obviously been doing um, a couple of interviews regarding this in order to get your story out as you are doing now, but if nothing comes of you speaking out, what is kind of the plan after that? <sighs> I don't know. I, I, I put on Twitter that I wanted to get a gym and stuff. If anyone like can give me some funding, um, any sponsorship, I'm going to get a gym and teach my what I've got on to the next level. I got a letter from UCAD saying, if I start doing stuff like this, I'll get eight year ban. It'll be another four years onto me four year. So they're telling me I can't spar. I got off a Callum Smith to spar. I got off a George Groves. They're saying if I have any interaction, I'll get eight year. So, and this ain't bullshit. I swear to God, I'm, I'm, I swear to God, it's like horrible what they're doing to me. It's like they're stalking me Twitter and that. I ain't even, they're not even following me, but they know. So you're saying that this situation has kind of not only stopped you from boxing, but having any kind of involvement any, in boxing whatsoever? Any, any form of involvement, I'm not allowed it. I've been offered amateur gyms from Sheffield offering me to give me the coaching course. They'll pay for it. Um, and they'll they'll pay for stuff for me to come and teach their kids. And this is I got a big threatening letter saying I'll get eight years. And I'm not joking. This is this is far from joking now. This is like ridiculous what's happening to me. I've had no support. I've had no support from anyone. This has just been a fight of myself. I'm not used to going to court and stuff and, and trying to do stuff. I've had no support. Everyone's dropped me. I had sponsors. I had a thousand pound a month sponsorship. First month they had bang gone. When you say everyone's dropped you uh, and you're on your own in this, uh, obviously you've got your friends and family, but there's only so much people around you can do if they're not actually able to do something physically to help you at so, least at least have me back verbally can i say ever then um kind of helping me if you know what i mean it'd be it'd be nice for someone to just say uh, when they know what i am uh, come on uh, i would try i've been boxing so since I was eight year old, I'm brainwashed to this sport. I'm absolutely brainwashed. Everything I did, boxing, I'm not going to ruin this. For a four days before a fight, having a tenth 
tenth of a recreational line to mess up my twenty years. No chance. My girlfriend would have kicked me out if she if she hundred percent didn't believe in me. What's the next step for you now, Liam? You, you're talking about potentially going back to no. you and, and changing what you've said. Is that a realistic possibility that that's what you'll do? Yeah. Um, next step, I'm gonna. I'm, I'm speaking to as a person. I'm gonna bullshit. I'm gonna say yes. I've had cocaine before fight. Please let me off. I'm begging you because I'm in need. I'm in need to get back to boxing to provide for my family. And that's bullshit I'm going to give him. Now, I'm barefaced lying to you. But if that's what I've got to do to get my license back, I'm going to do it. Uh, Liam, I will ask you if if that's what you're saying you're going to do. But if, if you kind of watching this and they're hearing you say that, what effect does that have? They've won. They've won. They've won. They've beat me. They've not just beat me. They've slaughtered me. It is a very unfortunate situation. I think I've seen online a lot of people um, having compassion for your situation. And I think the fact of the length of the ban is kind of what it is. Because if you if you'd been given a year ban or 18 months or even two years, you'd be back boxing now, uh, more or less. So Why not admit it? Why not admit it? I know this what, this what could have happened. Why not admit it? Why fight it? But that's what I've got to do. Liam, I don't blame you for fighting it, though, because if you're right, you, why do you want a name as someone who has been alleged to have taken cocaine four days before a fight? Why do you want that name? So I understand what you, why you did that, because <laughs> it's no different from people that go to court taking a lesser sentence to admit to something they haven't done. So... And, and I'm not just going to say this now for, like, sympathy. It's on records. It's with it, with the ambulance. Four weeks ago, like, I wanted to end it a lot. This is what they've done to me. I wanted the end. I took a drug overdose. I just swallowed everything I could. I went in ambulance. So I tried to kill myself. Do you know what I mean? This is no joke for me. This is... This is... <laughs> I'm not doing it for sympathy. I don't want people online to say, oh, yeah, oh. I tried, I didn't, I didn't, I couldn't, I can't hack it. Do you know what I mean? I couldn't hack it. So I tried taking everything I could. I would walk up in an ambulance. That's horrible to hear that, mate. It really is. But this is, this is what's happening to that. You know, I'm not lying when I'm doing shit like this. Why would I do shit? I love my kids to bits. Why would I want to end it and not see them again? Do you know what I mean? I'm, I feel like a bum not being able to provide for my kids and stuff because what these people have done to me. Sorry, Bill, I feel I feel a scumbag. Liam, listen, it's, it's horrendous to, to hear you say these things and, like I said, I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that suffer with um, faults like these that can relate to what you're saying. And... Uh, Hopefully, Liam, you've got some good people around you still, your family and your friends. And oh, yeah, unbelievable. You, you as well. yeah, unbelievable, man. But I've just got family close-knit family around me. Like, I, I ain't said that for sympathy or I want people to go, oh, oh, Liam, it's like, this is what real, what's really happening. It's not a joke, man. They've, they've fucked me up. I mean, I'm not saying not to ban me. Ban is all the same. Give, give me, give them four years like they've given me, or give me six months. Have you spoken to someone, or are you speaking to people about what you've just told me there, Liam? Oh no, no, it's, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm fine, but it's like this is this is past now. This were weeks ago, kind of thing. But I'm sound, I'm sound, I'm getting on with, it and like this is what it is. I don't want it to be blown out of proportion. But no, but it's not a nice thing to hear, Liam, and I think... Um, it's, not, it's not, but this is what they've done to me. I'm not a liar. I feel like a liar. Like, 
their word against mine because they're, they're professional and I'm not. My word is my art, do you know what I mean? I don't do this shit to, like, to be lying. This is a job for them. This isn't a job for me. This is my life. I hope you can find some sort of resolution for this because... I hope so. I hope so. for your sake because, listen, it comes down to a fact of people can believe you or not. And regardless of that, Liam... Get shit and I'm going to get goodness, but... Regardless of that, when we kind of look at the facts and reading through that UCAD statement, a four-year ban for, as you've said, a tenth of a recreational drug is harsh in comparison to the multiple cases that we see every day, every month. About. Yeah. You've got cricket players, you've got rugby players, all KR player got done for it. same stuff as me. He admitted it and said he was depressed. He had a night out, slipped up, got four months. It's on the UK website. I'm reading this shit. <laughs> I really hope you can, like I said, find some sort of uh, resolution and, and peace within yourself for this because it's obviously not doing you any good at the moment being in this situation. So I hope someone... Well, listen, I appreciate your channel and Coogan, honestly, I respect this isn't just an interview to me. This is this is my life, do you know what I mean? And I'm so grateful for like you you're helping me out and giving me some airtime. You haven't got to be grateful to me, mate. You haven't, honestly. This is what I do anyway, so... To me, like... I I have never, I've never I've probably had two Eiffel London fingers, whatever it is. I, I, I TV, is it? IFL TV. IFL TV. London, so, yeah. Well, that's too many headshots, can't remember. But, yeah, I, honestly, I appreciate it. And honestly, respect. Thank you. Like I said, it's not a problem, and I appreciate your comments, but you really don't have to thank us. Um, Liam, listen... Um, I hope, like I said to you, you get some sort of uh, peace with this because it's not good for your your mental state. Uh, we can see that. It's not good for your financial situation. It's not a good situation all round. And it just seems like, like I said, you've suffered for two years with this. And uh, it to go on another two years, is it, it's not right. And I think a lot of people watching this will be able to relate to that and agree with that. You know. Well, I hope this video spreads its message and I hope everyone gets behind me and retweets it and just give some shit to you, Cad, and tell them that it's this isn't fair. One rule for one and one rule for another. Banners all the same. That's all I've got. To, that's all I can say. And let's hope for the best of this interview because obviously it's going to be the biggest like what I've had. So we'll see. All right. Well, listen. Liam, keep yourself safe and uh, so I'll have a chat with you in a few days and see if you're all right. And um, oh, I'm gonna be, I'll be all right. It's not. I know. I know. Listen. I know you're saying that it was weeks ago, but it's it's not a nice thing to hear. And I think. Oh, no, I know, but that's what I've got to I'm, tell the truth. I can't hide do that. Do you know what I mean? It's like. I'm open, I'm an open book, I'm honest and open. Like I told you before, interview, I'll be honest and I'll be open. Well, I appreciate your time. So, um, yeah, hopefully, like I said, we'll have a, we'll have a like, catch up in, uh, like we could do another interview whenever you want, but like I said, we'll have a catch up uh, soon. So keep yourself safe and, uh, yeah, keep yourself ticking over, Liam. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Cougar, mate. Oh, no problem. Thank you very much for your time, Liam Cameron.